Hi. See all those mics back there? It's microphone fun time. Now, the world is completely flooded with studio condenser mics. And uh, I have a bunch of them I'm going to put up against each other for your viewing pleasure, including a $69 Neumann, Chinese, of course, and it, uh, it's supposed to be a, a U67. And, uh, except it's not multi-pattern. And the famous Sony C100, along with my antique C37 back there. They're great. I love them all. And here we go. Let me introduce, I'm going to introduce the mics first. All right. These, this is a, an Alesis mic. It says groove tube on one side and Alesis on the other because they sold to them. I'm not taking the little dresses off. Sorry, that's just pantyhose. Can't take their pantyhose off. Now, uh, this one is an E300 CAD. Pretty nice mic. The Sony. The Sony C100. 1500 bucks brand new. You can get them a little less sometimes. And the C37. The C37A, you can't get them, sorry. Well, they're very, very expensive. Mine, uh, it's in good shape, but the cord is in terrible shape. Horrible shape. Needs to be replaced. I, this mic needs refurbishing. Here is the famous VX2, the CAD VX2. Very classy mic, two vacuum tubes inside, a preamp and a driver. Here's the Tryon 8000. That's a CAD mic. It's a multi pattern tube mic. Very nice. Here is a single pattern cardioid only CAD tube mic called the M9. Eh, it's not the best M9 because they had an M9 Gold with a better capsule. But it is decent and you will hear it. An old MXL Mogami series that came without a windscreen, so I had to make a screen for it. And finally, the uh, $69 Neumann. And this one is an Orpheum. But they, they have other brands, too, that are the same thing. And they also go up to $99 or even more. But this was $69, brand new, in the box, with a fancy lunch box. And it came also in a cardboard box, which I'm using for something else. But you can see they put the brand name on it with a sticker. So you can have another brand name if you want. Hey, you could probably have your own brand of mics if you want. And here's the lunchbox for the little Sony 100. There, now it is. Okay, now I'm going to clap myself in. Okay, here's the GT57. And uh, it's uh, it's a multi pattern and does very well above the drums. By the way, now uh, here's the fifty one. It sounds a little more skinny uh, compared to this. Uh, very close, very close, but uh, hard to tell. Anyway. Here is the CAD E300, and I consider it a very glassy mic. And maybe you can tell. And the C100 Sony. It sounds very neutral, actually. Now, I had this above the drums, and it was wonderful. I recorded drums with just this uh, overhead and a couple of kick drum mics. And if I hadn't had the kick drum mics, it still would have been okay. This thing here is for blocks. 
And, uh, yeah, you can hear the garbage truck going by six blocks away and all that stuff. And here is my old Sony. This is the C37. And it's very beautiful. In fact, the woman who sings for me on my other videos, Monique, this is her favorite. It's beautiful. I'd love to order a new one if I could get a brand new one. Look how terrible the cord is. All frayed and messed up. It needs a new cord and new capacitors in the power supply. And it could use new tubes too. Why not? Now, moving on. Here's the CAD VSM. No, VX2. The VX2. It's very classy, Mike. Very expensive in every way. It's got, this is the 1.1 uh, inch capsules. Capsules, I say, because it's got two of them, so it's multi-pattern. And it also comes with one and a quarter inch interchangeable capsules, which are in my mic box. I prefer the 110s. But, oh wow, what a mic. It's great. And it's beautiful above the drums. And I really want to know if the Sony's going to be better, and we're going to put them there. I always like to do that. Try different mics above the drums and make my decisions later. So now this is the Tryon 8000, also very glassy and pretty nice. It's a tube mic, multi-pattern, Chinese capsule, externally energized. As I say, the only electrode in here is in that Sony and is in the, only in the tweeter version, top part. So uh, it's nice. I like it. This is a cheaper CAD and sounds different, kind of thicker. Uh, now the electronics on this CAD go down to five cycles per second. It's a tube, another David Baskin design. And uh, I like it especially for guitars and basses. It's, I don't think I prefer it for vocals. I don't have that, why not? And here is an MXL. Where is the front? There we go. This MXL is a tube mic with just a uh, Chinese capsule, cardioid only, no, uh, no frills. And here is the $69 Neumann. This is a FET mic. And it, uh, it's not that bad. It's a uh, cardioid only. And, uh, now, I have all the mics turned up and my refrigerator on, but I'm going to solo them in a minute. Yeah, it's a $69, and they call it an Orpheum, but I think Viking also. It has a sticker on the box for the brand name, so they could change it at will. And uh, Neumanns are cheap now. This is supposed to be a U67, but it's not multi-pattern. It has no, uh, no tone cut, no pad no nothing but who cares 69 bucks comes in a beautiful box and uh it's at least great for hi-hat why not see i don't put up shurs around the drums anymore because i don't have to since the world is so flooded with these studio microphones why not and they sound great on the drums so CAD. It goes to the Tryon 8000. So here we are. All right, I'm soloing the Tryon 8000. Yeah, it sounds a little different without all the other mics in the mix. So, uh, moving on. Now, uh, usually I don't just talk in a mic like this up close. I scream from about a foot and a half. And I got the compressor on. But I'm not going to do any real screaming. But you could tell, as more where I would use a mic, a foot away. And I would use, I would also use that thing over there, the stocking over the wire that I put over. Now, I'm going to have to get used to holding cameras and doing this at the same time. Okay, I'm soloing the Tryon 8000. Actually, I'd use it from back here, not up here. And I think over the drums, is a great idea. I'm going to try all these things over the drums. I've tried most of them, but this one's new to me. Let me solo the next one. 
And what would that be? That would probably be the beautiful VX2. Now, I also have the VSM1. Now, none of these sound as bassy without all the other mics in the mix. Oh, well. So, uh, I love this mic. It's very classy and beautiful in every way. And as interchangeable capsules, this is the 1.1 inch pair because it is multi-pattern. And it comes with an interchangeable one and a quarter inch if you don't get enough bass off this. Uh, again, the electronics go down to five cycles per second. The capsule goes down to 20 very comfortably. And the one and a quarter inch, probably deeper than that. But uh, I like this one very much. And I'm gonna move on with the solo button. You can tell when I put all the others on. Now this one, what is this one? Where is it? Is it this? Yes, it's this. And this mic is hotter. I, in fact, I had to put in a pad and turn up the gain to equalize it. So uh, now I like this little M9. It, it's a CAD M9. I like it for instruments. I don't really use it for voice because I got those other ones that sound so great. But uh, it's a Chinese capsule, and they have one with the American capsule called the M9 Gold, but you can't find them. And moving right along. Now where are we? Well, are we to my old Sony? Yes, we are. We're to the... 57 now hear the hum it needs new capacitors but you know i use it over the drums and for screaming at and when it's that loud you can't notice the hum nevertheless it needs new capacitors could probably use new tubes and uh certainly needs a new cable and i love this mic and they're very expensive now so expensive i had to buy a new sony next door and i will keep going on with the soloing to the MXL. Well, it's a tube mic. Now, I think it sounds a bit on the cheap side, and I'm sure it's the capsule, because, uh, you know, a tube amp is a tube amp, and really, amplifiers are easy to make. It's easy to design a good, clean amplifier, and they have very low distortion compared to speakers and capsules. That's really the crux of the matter, but I'm gonna turn this up just a little more. We see it's on the edge of noise now, but you know, if you use it for something loud, uh, certainly a hi-hat or a, a tom-tom, I'm not afraid to use it there. I think I, I'm gonna use actually my uh, what you call it, it's on the Tom Toms, the uh, groove tube mics. Like this one, this groove tube mic, which I already, that's my announcer mic. Not to disappoint, I got out my Rode NT2 out of the kick drum. And you can see I put a dot of nail polish on most of my mics so you can tell what the front is, so the singer knows where to stand. So. Yes, this is a good mic. It sounds a lot like GT mic, but I I left this up so I can test this one against it too. And then, on, of course I like that one, but I can't hear because I'm not wearing my phones. I'm just looking at the meters. And here's the Sony. There you go. I think I'll put on my phones. All right, so here's this mic. Let me turn it up for me. Oh, yeah. It's a very decent mic, no problem there. And uh, multi pattern, 
they don't make these anymore. They do make the NT2A. I don't know much about it. Uh, now, I said how these are like there. So anyway, yeah, this is the NT2, not the 2A. And it's multi-pattern. Uh, it's got everything on it, the usual. And I think I'll grab this camera and go over here. And this is back to the try-on. Uh -huh, the try-on's pretty awesome. Really is. Now, there's nothing wrong with the NT2. But the NT2 lives in my kick drum and is very happy there. Yes, it could be a main studio mic for somebody's studio. And then back to the Sony. Here, uh, I gotta turn it up so I can hear it. Which is over here and sounds good all the time. And very nice. So, now you seen a few of the popular mics but you know there are a ton of mics out there there are the boutique neumann copies which are very many and i'm sure they're all pretty good i don't know if they're worth all that money and uh i never tried them i'm sure they're fine uh then there are also mics like the aventone and all that stuff and the sterling you know you're really scraping the bottom of the condenser mic market when you do that. These are pretty much the pick of the litter of the cheap mics, and they went for around six, seven hundred new, except for the sixty-nine Buck Neumann. And I think that sixty-nine Buck Neumann is short on bass, and I'm just not sure. I'd have to really do a real test on it, but I think the bottom does not stand up to these other mics I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if it really rolled off at 40 or something like that there's my phone again bye